Wait, what? Nothing but bills again? I'm telling you, folks, this, this is ridiculous. I should just uh, take this and yeah, get, look, there we go. We'll just uh, stuff that under there. There we go. That's enough. Oh, hey, uh, hello, everyone. Randy here playing uh, Farming Simulator uh, 22 on Prairie Farms, Michigan here. And since last episode, I know I said I wasn't going to, and then I completely forgot everyone, and I bailed up our grass field here. However, I have not bailed up field eight yet, so I kind of just uh, flip-flopped, and uh, we haven't done field eight, so we're going to work on that here this episode. Uh, we didn't get uh, what I would consider to be a whole lot of bales off of field three here again. It just, uh, I don't know, it doesn't feel like that many bales if you go over here, one. They seem a little uh, little sparse, but hey, I seems to be uh, getting some bales here at least, and uh, I would probably another load and a half here if I had to guess. We'll find out. But at least uh, it is ready to be mowed every single day here in the game. I'm like, oh my goodness. I mean, like, I don't know how often this is going to keep uh, continuing here. Uh, where's my map the screen here? Where am I? What am I looking for? Where'd it go? Am I missing something? There's that one there. No, that's not the one. Uh, let's see once here. Yeah, where's our calendar? Am I missing the calendar, everyone? I declare I'm missing the calendar. Well, let's see. Nope, 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 nope. Um, aren't we miss, we're, uh, okay, well, anyway, well, uh, we'll come back and look at that later. I mean, I, I think I'm, uh, aren't I missing a screen here? Going crazy. I'm, I'm telling you folks, going crazy. Anyway, we're going to hop over to field eight here. Let's go back to that one so I can click on my tractor here. And we're going to start bailing here. Got the uh, John Deere 7R 270 here with the uh, Crone Big Pack 1290 HDP VC. I'm sure all those numbers probably mean something, but yeah, I can tell you what the uh, 270 on the tractor means. John Deere 7R 270, 7R series tractor, 270 horsepower. I think that's the normal horsepower, by the way. It probably boosts a little bit higher, but anyway, we are going to start uh, bailing here. Oh, okay, yeah, we got three headlands, so I probably can't, actually, well, speaking of three headlands, I should probably actually start on the inside portion here. That's the way uh, course play it raked it, and I'll probably have a uh, course play uh, pick up with this here at uh, some point. I don't think we'll be uh, bailing the entire field ourselves. And we'll probably get some uh, GPS going here as well. And I know I've showed this uh, trick before, but for those of you wondering how to get that uh, GPS set up on something like this, because obviously the baler, I mean, uh, if you do an auto width, it's probably going to come back to like three meters or something like that. And uh, I mean, I suppose you could probably get that to work. I'm going to just pick the closest three meter one that lines up with your windrow, sure. But let's see. Excuse me. Uh, we're going to load up a uh, zero degree course. I think that's what we want. I am not going to uh, auto with that here this time around. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to finish the first pass, Kevin. And then when we uh, go to turn around, we will increase or decrease. Uh, from the looks of it, I'm going to say increase. Probably is going to be the right option. Uh, we are going to increase our width until the center line matches up on the next windrow, or at least really close anyway. It looks like I might be just a little bit over here. Get this is centered on the windrow as possible. That looks pretty close. And we're pumping out the uh, alfalfa bales here. And, and by the way, of course, with the alfalfa bales, Evan, we're just going to be uh, straight up selling these. Unfortunately, the uh, barns we have do not take alfalfa. I have been told if I wanted to mix my own mixed rations here, which I don't particularly want to do, but if we wanted to, Evan, then we could potentially use the alfalfa. The Indian mix and wagons apparently do take the alfalfa. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, the barns do not. So, um, I did debate on maybe uh, switching this field over to a grass field. Oh my, can you folks imagine how much grass and hay we would have at that point? <laughs> we can mow it every single day in the game. Oh my goodness, I'm like, that's, uh, that's a little bit ridiculous. Yeah, I'm, um, where is the screen? That's the selling one. Where is our calendar screen? Am I missing it, everyone? I'm probably missing. I'm probably looking right at. Oh, well, anyway. Let's see once here. And as I was saying, what we're going to do, we need to increase it a whole lot here. I'm going to bump up the resolution on that a little bit there. Go up to, I don't know, let's try 35. Hey, look at that. 
And actually, if I uh, paid attention, I mean, I could probably go look at what the uh, GPS course was, or not, sorry, not the GPS course, the uh, course play course, uh, get the width that course play was using, and then just, you know, program that, in, program that into the GPS here as well. But, ah, come on, you folks know we're not that sophisticated over here, are we? Nah, doesn't seem like it. Looks like we maybe could be just a little bit bigger, maybe. And here again, I'm one, you know, usually what I always find, once you get maybe uh, three or four rows in, that's usually when you can actually get it like really dialed in. You need to go down, a, and you could do that too if you wanted to, Evan. You could just go down a couple of rows and see once how well it lines up a couple of more rows down. And then in theory, Evan, you know, if you go down, let's say a half a dozen rows, get it lined up, then you should really be close to being right, right? Listen, Evan, I've only done, you know, the one row essentially, so I could still be off by a little bit. And, of course, the further down you go, I mean, the more and more off it's going to get, right? Versus if you, uh, you know, go down a half a dozen rows and it's right, yeah, then you should be a lot closer. Yeah, you might still be off by the time you get to the end of one, but uh, it probably won't be as much as if you uh, do what I did here. But, we'll, again, we'll dial it in as we get a little further down. Interesting. I just noticed it shows like the round bale image down there. I think that's just the image they're using for the alfalfa, I presume. Oh, that is a stack mineral there. We're going to pick that one up. Get that out of our way. I don't know. It actually looks like we're looking pretty good here, one. I think we're looking pretty good. Yeah, maybe not. We are. If you look at the tires on one, the tire on this side is mostly out of the wind row, and this one's about half, or maybe actually a little more than half into the wind row, so might be uh, loading one side of the bale or a little bit more than the other. Let me just uh, bump that up. Uh, change the resolution back down. Actually, nope. That. And then bump it up. There we go. Let's try that. Yeah, now we're about half on the tire and just a smidge on the tire on that side. Okay. Yep. I'll go with that. Depends on how the wind rolls laying, though, too. You know, the parts were a little bit wider, so we'll say we are definitely pumping out the bales on this field. Uh, it, it does seem like the alfalfa, you get a lot more bales that one, and that'll probably be a little more evident on the uh, screen here when it comes to uh, seeing the bales across the field. You know, you look at this one, everyone, it's, I don't know, was there maybe 20? Uh, actually, might be more than 20 bales over there. Might be 30. Yeah, probably like 30. Somewhere between 25 and 30 bales, if I had to guess. Uh, this field, that we probably already got that many bales here. Just on the few bales we've made so far. We do have a couple of hay bales over here as well. Probably come up, pick those up. Make sure I bring those over to the cows here. I'm having my doubts as to whether that small hay field we have uh, will be enough hay to feed our four cow barns we have. We'll see once here, I guess, of course, case buy some hay, right? Oh, I should really remove that uh, ugly three-point from the front of this track here as well and put a nice uh, front weight back on there. Yeah, just happened to notice that one. Mm. Oh, well. Comment on uh, European tractors, that one. Don't see that very often on the American-style tractors. So uh, You do, of course, see them occasionally, that one, but, yeah, generally speaking, you don't see the front three-points. It's usually a rack of weights up front. Or what you might occasionally see, depending on the uh, brand of the track, that one is something that looks like a front three-point, but it's not. It's just a front weight bracket that looks like a three-point, if you will. But they're still not actually three points. Whereas this, of course, that one is like actual three-point lift arms, the whole works, right? You know, again, just uh, amazes me. As I've said before, everyone, when it comes to the American farming technology versus the European farming technology, I mean, You'd think there won't be that much of a difference, but uh, there's definitely a lot, a lot of differences when it comes to you know, American and European. Uh, not saying you know one's necessarily better or worse than the other, or one's wrong, one's right. Just it, it's interesting. I want to see the uh, differences, right? Of 
course, at least for my part, I mean, I've probably uh, done the, some uh, commenting on the European uh, farming and how their equipment seems to be uh, overly complicated to say the American style of equipment, uh, especially when it comes to pitch designs and front three points. And oh, I think it was the last episode we were looking at the roller there as well. You know, the uh, the European style roller. I'm sorry, but this is like the most over-engineered piece of crap compared to just the, uh, again, you know, American style here. Like, you know, American style. And this thing is 22 meters wide. This is 24. Okay, that's a little wider, but got any one that's wider? No, 18. Also, 18. Let's see, do I got another one? I thought I had another one here. Got one that's 20. Okay, so we don't have one that's quite as wide as the European one there, but still. 22 meters versus 24 meters, about the same. Just, yeah, the uh, the over-engineering of that thing. Oh my goodness, that one, like, really? And actually, here's a, a good point to uh, think about, everyone. Uh, so you folks might be wondering, like, why would I care? Okay, so the Europeans over-engineer their roller by a factor of 10. Like, why would I care if they over-engineer this, right? Well, something to think about here, everyone. That farmer that is using that piece of equipment had to pay for that. That means that uh, the farmer, and again, the farmers don't really set the prices for their crop. Right? But, with that being said, it still is going to cost the farmer more to produce that than, say, a much cheaper alternative Although in the game here, I won uh, 140 versus 110. Actually, no, well, there's one that's 45,000. I don't know how close these prices actually are to uh, real life. I know some of the prices in the game, I mean, some of them line up, some of them do not. Um, a prime example of this, by the way, if you go to the combines here, I won. Uh, let's see once here. Making everyone dizzy here. Like the John Deere X9, 550,000. Yeah, I doubt you're going to get a John Deere X9 for 550,000, I won. I guess maybe the very basic model. Maybe? I don't know. Last time I checked, I, mean, I think uh, you need to add about another quarter million dollars to that price tag or more. Especially when you uh, throw a head in that. So, yeah, just something to think about there, everyone. When it comes to, you know, the farm equipment, does it really matter how much it costs? Well, that's how much you want to pay at the grocery store, I guess, right? might need to adjust our uh, GPS here again a little bit. Bump it down a notch here. And of course, the uh, the further away you get from your home line, everyone, the more or the bigger of a difference you're going to notice when you do that. Like, it's not going to move it. Should I go back to this? Uh, it's not going to move it just 0.164. It's going to move it 0.164 times however many lines or rows we've done. So if we've done, you know, five rows so far, I think we're up to, right? One, two, three, four, five. Actually, we're up to six. So, yeah, five rows if you count home line, right? How about six if you count home line? So, yeah, multiply 0.16 times five. I want, now you're looking at almost a one. Now, let's see, it's five, eight, point eight, I believe, if I did the math correctly on that one there, everyone. About point eight of a meter. Well, anyway, I think we've done enough uh, bailing here. Let's uh, maybe get that uh, course by going on this job. Uh, field, field, no, we, this is field eight, right? It's field eight. Let's go to course play field eight. Load up that course. Activate it. And if we're on the same uh, line here, which I think we should be, we should be able to just do nearest waypoint, and it should pick right up, I think. Yep, I do believe we're doing good, Owen. Stop following right where our course play would have. Let's go grab a truck, Owen. Let's get the bales picked up here on field three then. Let's see, is that the truck? Yes, it is. We're going to go grab the bales on field three. We'll get those uh, loaded up and off the field. And if I've seen it correctly, it looks like that field might need some lime. So we'll get some lime on that field as well. And then I would presume it would need some fertilizer too, I would think. Unless it was fertilizer I was looking at, not the lime. Let's uh, see what's here. PH is bad. No, it's actually saying the pH. The nitrogen. The nitrogen is surprisingly good. Though the pH over here is okay. Hmm. Now it's bad again. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Might need some nitrogen. Or I mean, not some nitrogen. Uh, some lime on it. 
We'll get the bales picked up off here first. Um, okay. Fine, we'll pick that one up then. Just a matter of driving around the field, let the auto load trailer do the work, that one. You know, that's one of those things that when uh, folks ask how I like to play, and I always like to say as realistically as possible, given the limitations of the game. Um, this is one instance where I don't probably play very realistically. I went, I'm sorry, but I'm not picking up bales by hand. Uh, the uh, the game physics here just uh, are too infuriating, if you ask me. Mind you, Giants has gotten uh, significantly better, I would say, in the physics department when it comes to picking up bales. With that being said, still, I, uh, I will pass on the uh, blessed experience of uh, picking up bales here in this game as much as possible. Okay, well, it looks like we're going to end up with not even a truckload of bales off the field here, which is a little disappointing if you ask me. I thought, uh, I thought we would have gotten more than that. Mind you, I do see there's a little bit of hay left on the field here yet. Might have to uh, do some adjusting on that, that course play course there. Apparently it's a little narrow. Well, we got two more bales over on the other field. That one. I don't know what's the easiest way to get there. Question, actually. I guess we'll go out and around this way. Actually, wait a minute. Can we go out around this way? Um, they don't remember if there's a path over here or not. I guess we're going to find out. I think there's. Looks like there is anyway. Oh, yeah. That'll work. Well, hopefully it'll work anyway. That's a little narrow. Oh, we got it. Oh, and we're only into the month of May here so far. Oh, my goodness. We'll get this done. I want to get the bales uh, picked up and stuff. We'll skip time, and it'll be ready to mow the field again. I don't know. You, you folks getting a little sick of uh, mowing grass here yet? Uh, hopefully not, because we do kind of need that one. We do need as many bales as we possibly can get here, so... And last one, and that means whoop, we got one full truckload of bales. Very nice. We'll just try to go uh, pick a barn here that looks like it needs it the most. Drop those off there, and then we can start uh, loading up some alfalfa bales here as well. And then also, like I said, we'll, we'll spread some lime on that field as well. We'll have to have a hard to beat the good old classic uh, auto load trailer like this. It does work uh, quite well at times. And I do believe this is the one that should work actually on the console as well. Some uh, genius here back in Farming Simulator 19 actually figured out how to get these to work on the console using basically the in game auto loading script, I guess. Yeah, I guess it is a script now that I think about it. So the in game auto loading script. Let's see. So it looks like that one is fairly full. That one there had bales by it. Let's see how these two here are looking a minute. That one's got a few bales, not very many. And this one... Oh, I think we got our winner there. That one looks like that is definitely the lowest. So this one over here looks like it is either full or nearly full. And that one back there is definitely much, much emptier. And worst case, too, we can always bring some to this barn, too, if we had to. I mean, not to mention we got some sitting there. So we got uh, we got a fair amount of hay bales sitting around here, which is good. We also got a fair amount of uh, manure sitting there, too. I see that. Interesting. Might have to do something with that manure, everyone. Maybe look at uh, picking up a solid manure spread or some at, uh, of some sorts. 
see if we put some solid manure down on our hay field. There we go. Excellent. Okay, I see the pro forces over there, but I figured I was going to go use our other spreader here. I believe is in this shed. Yep, there it is. We're going to go use the interrogator here. I think there, yep, there's lime in here yet as well. Excellent. Oh, should we top it off? I want her to top it off, maybe. And while we're waiting for that to top off, what does the uh, map look like here for this uh, field? Oh, yield's looking pretty good. That is a good sign. Nitrogen. Yeah, the nitrogen definitely looks low. I went, but driving across the field, it seemed like it said it was okay. I might have to take a little closer look at that here. I think it feels a little tippy here. And if we do a quick uh, pass along this end of the field here, we could probably just throw a hired worker on this. Yes, yes, fine. There we go. Now you're done for pulling out. Yep. I guess whoever did this uh, mod, it seems like they did. Oh, boy. Oops. Hmm. We, we seem to be front wheel drive here. Okay. Oh boy. Might need a tow, I want. Might need a tow. I think I can uh, just, uh, give a little assistance there. I thought we were good, then we just kind of rolled and should have put the parking brake on, I guess. Okay, hired worker, you're up. Let the hired worker hopefully I take care of that. And then I happen to notice I left the. Oh, the 8RT 370 out here with our tatter on it. Slide over, kill anyone? Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little bit, maybe. Or maybe we should say a whole lot of it. Yeah, I might have to look at getting another uh, smaller track here at some point. I'm just uh, run some of the uh, smaller tools we're using for hay production here. I mean, mind you, the 7R and uh, the Magnum are pretty good tractors when it comes to doing some of the bigger mowing and baling job, but... Little overkill, I would say, for uh, doing something like this. This little tether here. It's on a little 100 horsepower tractor, probably more than enough for that. One good thing, nice and uh, maneuverable in uh, the shed there when it comes to this tractor. Okay, we'll just uh, park that there. Lime spreader's good on that. Oh, you know what? I was going to look at... Yeah, let's just hop back in this here a minute. Feels what the nitrogen looked like across this field here. It's good. Okay, let's... Oh, it's bad there. Okay. Five, okay. I'm surprised it's saying, like... Okay, there it's perfect. 60's good, 30's good. Good. It's, it seems like most of the field is good, everyone. Or at least okay. A few sections are perfect. I'm not sure why we're seeing such a wide variation on that there. I mean, I guess maybe this map would explain. Though, oh yeah, okay. Well, no, wait a minute. We're in okay section here. Hmm. I don't know, man. I don't know. 
Might have to put some nitrogen on that. We'll see once here. Anyway, gonna grab the truck here again. Or we're gonna head out to our alfalfa field here, which actually, what I guess we'll just go this way because the cell point for the alfalfa is at the end of this road. And while we're traveling down there, see if I can load up some comments here a moment. Farmer Johnson was saying, great video. Hey, thank you very much for that. Uh, Magnus was saying, was that a mailbox I've seen under the 8R? Uh, <laughs> mailbox? No, uh, uh, nope, uh, nothing I know about. Nope, uh-uh. No, no, no mailboxes here. <coughs> Excuse me. I was saying I have to talk about the uh, postmaster in the county about this. Tiss, tiss. Uh, great video as always. Uh, you're doing a great job. Well, hey, thank you very much for that there, uh, Magnus. Always very much appreciated. <laughs> uh, the Fisher J was saying um, that person that was leaving comments about the bales probably has the Maze Plus mod activated. That's why he's getting grass inside. Oh, there we go. That could be why. Very good point. Oh, I thought the person said they had no mods, but uh, yes, the Fisher, and that's usually, uh, come on now, there we go. Getting this trailer in the right mode to actually pick up the bales sometimes, you gotta like push B and Y a couple of times before it actually starts working. But uh, anyway, I was gonna say, when usually when it comes to problems with this game, nine out of 10 times I'm when they are mod related. Uh, unless of course you talk about when the first game first came out. And, then obviously Giants created enough of their own problems, but. At this point, I would say the game is pretty solid. And even when it first came out, I mean, I would say the game was, as, as far as like crashing and stuff like that, really didn't have a whole lot of issues with that typically. Although if folks remember my store, we had a lot of issues with crashing, just it was that startup. Once you actually were in the game, then it was fine. Uh, Night Wolf was uh, saying, uh, Google says Larson Farms farms 6,500, oh, I gotta love Google, right? <laughs> farms 6,500 acres, 187,000 bushels of corn, 150,000 bushels of beans. Wow. 187,000 bushels of corn. That's, uh, yeah, I thought that sink in. I'm on 100, eight, I mean, 800. Yeah, 875,000. Yeah. I don't know if I would trust those numbers, I'm, but just, you know, that's, yeah. Uh, Dustin was saying the separated manures from pumps and hoses DLC. FYI, great videos. Hey, thank you very much for that. We got a full load of bales. Nice. Yeah, I was thinking about uh, playing with the pumps and hoses packs on this map. But I don't know. Might be a little too much to uh, play with with everything else we got going on. We might have to play with that on another map at some point. Here, but we'll see you once here. Uh, Orion was asking, great episode. How can I make sure that course play routes stay on one field and not go to fields three and four? Now, I'm wondering if, are you asking about this map here, Orion? Uh, let me go sell these bales here and we'll take a look at the map, everyone. Because if you're talking about this map, everyone, what I had to do, and I mentioned it earlier in this series, everyone, uh, you folks may notice that the boundaries around my field are much larger than the boundaries might be on your map. Uh, so of course, what I've done, I went is I've increased the boundaries between the fields. I've, I've painted them much larger. In fact, I've painted them one maximum brush stroke larger. So whatever the um, largest brush, brush stroke in the game is, that's what I've painted them. There we go, not too bad, one. Uh, a little over $100,000 there. Add in the environmental score. Not bad. So yeah, if you're talking about this field up one, at least in my opinion, the easiest thing to do is just go around the boundary of your field and just paint it wider. So of course, you know, go into this shop here, go down to your construction, go down to your landscaping, go down to your painting, you know, crank up the maximum one to, you know, whatever the max size is here and just Paint that all the way around the outside edge of your field. 
Because, yeah, if you look at, let's see, he was talking about fields one and three here. Where are fields one and three? Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, so you got one up here. Oh, yeah, perfect example. One, two, and three here. The uh, boundaries between these fields, everyone, are so close, at least uh, especially with two and three. Uh, two and three are so close, everyone, that when course play goes to generate a course, it can't quite detect that there's actually a difference between the two fields, and it'll just lump those fields all into one. Uh, of course, I had the same problem back with uh, fields six, eight, and seven here, everyone. Course play would just lump them all, and I missed my turn, didn't I? Me just driving on the neighbor's crop here, turning around. And that's where I'm going, too busy talking. And uh, painting these as well have advantages for hired workers and I don't know if auto drive would care so much, but at least for hired workers, anyone, hired workers will appreciate that as well. Otherwise, you're, again, your boundaries are so small of one that hired workers won't even attack them properly and you'll have hired workers jumping fields and it just gets to be a mess, so... I mean, yeah, everyone, it might be a little more realistic that way, having your super narrow field boundaries, but oh, the nightmare it creates with hired workers and force play just, just not worth it. Let's see what's your Delangus, and apologies if I mispronounce your name there. Uh, says Larson Farms also has another smaller tractor. They got like a 6410 or something. Oh, you know what? I think you're right on that one there. I forgot about that one. Or did they get rid? Wait, did they get rid of that? One? I'm trying to remember here now. Might have to use that as an excuse. I won't have to get another smaller tractor. That'd be perfect though, like a 61 4 or 6410. Yes, yeah, so that'd be like the perfect little tractor for uh, doing hay work with. I don't know if I have a mod for that or not. All right, that we'll just look for something uh, as close as we can get, maybe. Uh, he was also saying there are some American self-propelled mowers on the Giants Mod Hub. And there is another growth stage to the grass. Oh, you know what? It, wait a minute, is there? Hmm. Okay. He actually might be right on that. For those who don't know, back in the Farming Simulator uh, 19, that one, Grass actually had two, and I'm not sure what to call these, that one, uh, two harvestable, or two mowable stages, I guess, if you will. Two stages where you can mow it, that one. You had the first stage where it was ready, so you can mow it then. And then there was a second stage where you could get a higher yield if you waited another growth stage, essentially. So, I, I, you know, I guess I didn't realize that. Does Farming Simulator 22 do the same? Because uh, back in uh, Farming Simulator 19, I mean, you could actually, like, see the difference here. You, like, you would actually have three different levels already, right? You, you don't have that here with Farming Simulator 22. It just it shows ready. And, of course, ready to harvest. It's ready to mow, of course. But, huh, very interesting there. I will have to whoop, watch where we're going. <laughs> I'll have to uh, look into that a little bit more there. Oh, speaking of looking into it a little bit more, I, mean, I should have been looking over at the time here. It is high time to wrap it up here for this episode. So on that note, if folks have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them down below. And as always, I want to thanks for watching and until next time.